Let's look at one aspect of the crazy German Deklination. Deutsche Deklination and see when to use ein, einen and einem. For example, let's use the male noun der Fan, der Fußballfan, for example, der Anhänger von. So let's say you are a fan of something and you want to say I am a fan. Ich bin ein Fan. However, let's say you have a YouTube channel and you have a fan. Then you say, ich habe einen Fan. Ich habe einen Fan. And in the third case, you're helping a fan. So, I help a fan. Ich helfe einem Fan. But what's going on there? Ein, einen and einem are three manifestations of the same word which is the masculine form of the English indefinite article A. So yes, all three words mean the same thing. The reason is that in German you must change indefinite articles like ein according to the gender you are referring to and according to the case, the casus of the sentence. And specifically, you use ein if it comes in front of a male noun that is the subject of the sentence, you use einen in front of the male noun that is the direct object of the sentence, and einem you use for the male noun that is the indirect object of the sentence. Another way of saying that the noun is either a subject, direct object, or indirect object is that the noun is in a particular case of the sentence. And here we have the dreaded words, nominative, accusative, and dative. There's also a fourth case, that's genitive, but we're gonna look at that in another clip. So for our three words, it means you use ein for the male noun that is in the nominative case of the sentence. You use einen for the male noun that is in the accusative case of the sentence. And you use einem for the male noun that is in the dative case of the sentence. And this sounds all pretty crazy. So let's look at examples. To figure out what is the subject, direct object or indirect object of a sentence, you can use the verbs as help. For example, in the beginning we had Ich bin ein Fan. What is the subject of the sentence? So what is the sentence all about? or who or what is performing an action in the sentence. So here it is clearly ich, I. And ich bin ein Fan means that you're referring to yourself, the subject of the sentence. That's why Fan here is in the nominative case and you need ein. Fan is the subject, the same as ich. So ein is the indefinite article for the male noun, der Fan, which is in the nominative case. What is the definite article? If you want to say, I am the fan, well, that is, ich bin der fan. Okay, example two of a nominative case. How do you say, he is a mathematician? You can pause the video. The solution is, er ist ein Mathematiker. So, Mathematiker is the subject, the subject of the sentence. So the indefinite article A is ein, and the definite article is der. Remember, it's the male noun. Now let's do an example for the male noun in the accusative case. She has a hamster. So she is obviously female, but hamster is der hamster that is male. You can pause the video, but the solution is Sie hat einen Hamster. Sie is the subject, the subject of the sentence. And der Hamster is the direct object of the sentence. So you need the accusative. Note that accusative here is pointing to the hamster because the hamster, the noun, is in the accusative form. So we need to use the form of einen for the indefinite article. And if it was the definite article, then it becomes sie hat den Hamster. 
So remember, you need the accusative for the direct object of the sentence. And that is the noun that is being affected by the action. There are a lot of verbs that are indicating that the direct object is following. For example, essen, to eat. Ich esse einen Apfel. Apfel here is the direct object. And how would you translate he finds a key? You can pause the video, but the solution is er findet einen Schlüssel. The family pays the vacation. Die Familie bezahlt den Urlaub. Another example is the boy is looking for a ball. Der Junge sucht einen Ball. Mögen, to like, is also indicative of accusative. So, she likes the movie, sie mag den Film. And machen, to make, what is, the pupil makes a mistake. Der Schüler macht einen Fehler. And lastly, let's look at the dative case, when the male noun is the indirect object of the sentence. A good example is helfen, like at the beginning of the video. Helfen needs dative, because you give help to. So the sentence is, ich helfe einem Fan. And with the definite article, it becomes, ich helfe dem Fan. A second verb for the dative is antworten. So she replies to a geologist, is sie antwortet einem Geologen. And she replies to the geologist, sie antwortet dem Geologen. Folgen is another example. So the cat follows a dog. Die Katze folgt einem Hund. And the cat folgt. <laughs> and the cat follows the dog. Die Katze folgt dem Hund. Let's do another one. Glauben. Er glaubt einem Mann. He believes a man. And he believes the man. Er glaubt dem Mann. We also have gehören, belong to, which needs the dative. The book belongs to a teacher. Das Buch gehört einem Lehrer. And the book belongs to the teacher. Das Buch gehört dem Lehrer. To sum up, what have we done today? It's a bit of a dry topic. But it's important to understand when to use ein, einen or einem, which are the indefinite articles, for male nouns. If those nouns are the nominative, accusative or dative of the sentence. And I have also given you some verbs that help you figure out which case is present. The list is not complete and you can easily Google more. Just type German verbs dative, for example. But that's it for today. I hope you find this information useful. Comment and subscribe and see you in the next clip. Tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal.